DNA isn't just the code of life, it's code, period. And multiple companies are working on using DNA to store data. Indeed, they're saying that DNA storage will come within five years. And that's not the only thing you can do with DNA. Let's have a look. Every week I look at how technology is shaping the future, but when it comes to coding, the future's here already. Today's sponsor, Emergent, is the world's first agentic vibe coding platform. You just chat with their AI and it builds you a production-ready app, and not just a prototype, complete with backend, front-end database, authentication, payments, whatever you need all in one platform. AI isn't quite ready yet to write your theory of everything, but for building software, it can do just fine. More than a million people are already building with Emergent, and if you need any indication that it's working, in just two months, they hit $10 million in annual revenue. People are actually using it to launch real businesses, community tools, and apps. So if you've got an idea rattling around in your head? Stop daydreaming about it and instead start building. Check out Emergent with the link in the description and turn that idea into reality. And now back to the science news. DNA is the most remarkable, stable and versatile molecule that can be synthetically generated. It can store a stunning 200 petabytes per gram or about 100 petabytes per cubic centimeter at least theoretically. For comparison, this is about 100,000 times more than today's solid-state storage devices. In practical terms, the highest storage density that's been reached for DNA is about a factor 10 less than the theoretical limit, but even so, that's still 10,000 times more than current storage devices. DNA can also last for a long time, probably a thousand years or longer. This makes it an ideal candidate for long-time archive tasks. Finally, a way to back up my masterpiece, final version, final Final three, use this one final 20. Doc. The huge potential in DNA storage has attracted a lot of interest both among researchers as well as in the industry. The technology has been pursued most visibly by a consortium called the DNA Storage Alliance that's been around since 2020. It now has 41 members that includes Microsoft, Dell, IBM, Samsung, Lenovo and a lot of universities. In a white paper that just appeared in June this year, they evaluate the readiness potential of DNA storage technology and conclude, we believe that the use of DNA for archival data storage use cases will emerge over the next three to five years. But how does it work? Scientists have been working on trying to use DNA for memory storage for about 20 years, but only recently they've been able to solve the biggest problems. These technologies all work with synthetic DNA. One first converts the data into a code based on the four nucleotides in DNA. Then one chemically synthesizes the molecule that encodes the data. Then one stores this typically as a sort of powder. It can be read out by DNA sequencing. Please do not snort your backup. The process of creating this customized DNA is currently extremely time-consuming, so let me be clear that DNA storage is not going to replace cloud storage anytime soon. While the fastest existing storage methods can now write as much as a gigabit per second, DNA memory currently makes it to roughly 100 megabits per day. While this might improve somewhat in the coming years, it's clear that this is special purpose storage. For example, for safety backups, a modern library of Alexandria, where the people of the 31st century can go and uncover global culture records, historical manuscripts, and every meme ever posted on Reddit. Maybe one day we can back up ourselves there. Okay, but wait, there are more things you can do with DNA. For example, scientists have been working for some while now on neural networks made of DNA strands. The idea is that one uses single-strand DNA that operates on double-strand DNA and that forms a logical processing unit. You see this illustrated here. One has an input strand that is single and a double strand that's kind of like a logical gate which has a free single end. By chemical reactions, the input strand migrates 
onto the double strand and pushes off one strand. That creates an output strand. So it's a logical process, input, gate, output. And one can use the base pass to determine just what one inputs and outputs. Indeed, one can use suitably programmed logical networks of DNA to perform simple calculations. And the nice thing about this is that it's entirely biocompatible. This could be used, for example, for medical analysis, but maybe one day also for data collection or, in fact, repair in tissue. Meanwhile, other research groups are weaving DNA into big lattices. They're doing this to design materials with custom properties, for example, to guide light or sound. Yes, that's right, they're building stuff out of interlocking DNA. Crazy! I think most people underestimate how dramatically custom-designed materials are going to change the world in a decade or two. Actually, I think that these DNA weaves could be a better way to store information. Hold tight while I submit to nature. Somewhat more seriously, I find this a most interesting crossover between biology and computer science that I'm sure we'll see more of in the near future with programmable nanorobots. Imagine one day you can change your DNA. What could possibly go wrong? Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.